From stories across the world of stories here at home, this is the National News Broadcast. A very good evening to you, I'm Nitya Sarachandra. And I'm Tarak Hityarachi. First to look at the stories making the headlines this evening. Thunder showers continue to affect many parts of the island. Cambodia and Sri Lanka join to propagate Theravada Buddhism. CMC Municipal Commissioner says that all Colombo garbage could be fully disposed by next Monday. First Randoli Berahara of the Candy Asala Festival begins. Now in your top story this evening, the Department of Meteorology predicts thunder showers in the sea areas of the southeastern and western areas of the island as a result of the activation of cloud systems in the region. The department reiterates that wind speeds may increase up to 70 to 80 kilometers per hour. The Department of Meteorology cautions the fishing and naval communities to remain vigilant of rough seas. These rainy weather conditions could be expected in the next few days as well. The weather report adds that the western, central, northwestern and Sabragamu provinces as well as certain locations in the Gaul and Mathura districts may experience heavy rainfall up to 100 millimeters. The department also requests the general public to take precautions to minimize accidents caused by thunder and lightning. A high-powered cable system and lorry were damaged due to a falling of a tree in Kiribat Godavattala Alutpara this afternoon. As a result, vehicle traffic was obstructed for about two hours. Our correspondent says power supply in the area has been disrupted. Measures are underway to restore electricity. Vehicle transport was obstructed due to the falling of a massive tree on the Gaul Mapalagama main road at the time of inclement weather. A correspondent says power supply has been interrupted. Fifteen houses in the Hathbodi of Athanara and Pita were reported to have been damaged due to strong winds. A correspondent reports that those affected by the calamity are being sheltered at the Hathbodi of Vihara. The National Disaster Relief Center says that 1,939 houses in 17 districts were damaged due to thunder showers and strong winds. Director of the center, Chaminda Pathiraja, says that measures have been taken to provide advance payments for the reconstruction of affected property. As a symbol of friendship between Sri Lanka and Cambodia, Na plants, the national tree of Sri Lanka, was gifted to a meditation center in Oak Dong Mountain this morning. President Maitripala Sirisena has presided over the occasion. The historical foundation of relationship between Sri Lanka and Cambodia is Buddhism. The president is engaged in his Cambodian tour on a special invitation extended by the King of Cambodia with the objective of enhancing bilateral relations in every field. The president took part in several programs to strengthen Buddhist relations between the two countries at a time when the president is engaged in an extensive task to safeguard and propagate Theravada Buddhism throughout the world through declaration of the sacred Tripitaka as a world heritage. President Maitripala Sirisena said that the Na Bodhi had extended assistance to several Lord Buddhas to attain enlightenment. He further said that the Bodhi is a tremendous facility to anybody to calm the mind. The President added that therefore it was an immense fortune for him to take part in this meritorious act. He further said that he hopes to further strengthen Sri Lanka-Cambodian relations through appointment of a new Consul General in Cambodia. The Na tree is not found in Cambodia, but it bears significant importance to Buddhism as it is one of the 28 Bodhi trees. The Sangharaja Theras of Cambodia and their said therefore that gifting of a Na tree is an important occasion for their country. The further said that President Maitripala Sirisena would enter history as a leader who consolidated Buddhist relations between Sri Lanka and Cambodia. Do you know 
who is the Buddha to come? Who is the Buddha to come? The next year, the next to appear in the world. The enlightened one is called Buddha Metteya, Maitreya, or Maitri, Maitreya, Metteya, the same name. Maitri Buddha is to come. And then, Maitriya Buddha will have a shelter, cool shelter under a Bodhi tree. That Bodhi tree is Naga Bodhi. So Naga Bodhi sapling was planted today by His Excellency Maitri. Therefore, we can understand the significance of this event. A large gathering of clergy and laymen, including Mahasangarajas of Cambodia, had graced the occasion. Now, the Sri Lankan de business delegation who visited Cambodia with President Maitri Palasari Sena says that they were able to establish new trade relations with the Southeast Asian nation. The business delegation, headed by the President of the Colombo Chamber of Commerce, Saranga Vijay Rabna, visited Sri Lanka this evening following a fruitful tour. Uh, the discussions dealt with regards to a promotion of tourism-related uh, areas, considering that Cambodia and Sri Lanka are both mainly Buddhist countries. Uh, the uh, discussions also led to, con air con to direct air connectivity between the two countries. And we have also had uh, the initial round of meetings on the, 10th, uh, on the 11th of August, at the Sofitel Hotel in Cambodia, uh, initiated with a business, uh, business forum of businessmen from Cambodia and Sri Lanka, which had breakout sessions, which led to direct connectivity in agricultural sectors and garment sectors and many other sectors which, uh, which Cambodia and Sri Lanka will form, uh, which the next day formed an MOU. So an MOU was also signed between the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Cambodia and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Sri Lanka, and between the Colombo Chamber of Commerce and the Chamber of Commerce of Cambodia. As Sri Lankan uh, Chamber of Commerce delegation, we explore many areas of uh, business opportunities like finance, IT, apparel, construction and agriculture, uh, and uh, uh, hospitality industry. So uh, we got very good feedback from their business leaders and uh, there's a great opportunity for Sri Lankan. Since Cambodia is one of the fastest growing countries in uh, within Asian region. The Parliamentary Committee of High and Ranks has approved the appointments of chiefs of 13 diplomatic corps by President Maitri Palasri Sena. The Foreign Minister says with these appointments, the ratio of diplomatic corps chiefs in, Sri, in the Sri Lankan Foreign Service has increased to 54 from 37 percent. Nine out of 13 individuals appointed as ambassadors and high commissioners were professional diplomats of the Foreign Service. Able profes foreign professional diplomats have been appointed for ambassadorial posts in Nigeria, Kuwait and the Korean Republic, Jordan, Vietnam, Nepal, Cuba, Ethiopia and Lebanon. In addition, four professionals of other fields have also been appointed. President's Council and human rights activist J.C. Valiamune has been appointed as Sri Lankan High Commissioner in Australia. Former Air Force Commander, Air Chief Marshal Kapila Jayampati is the new Sri Lankan High Commissioner in Malaysia. Former Survey General Nimar Karnaratna has been appointed as the Envoy of the Maldives and Advisor on International Entrepreneurship Kitsiri Atulat Mudali as the Ambassador of Qatar. A commemoration ceremony of Royal College Colombo was held at BMICH premises this morning. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe has presided over the event. The ceremony has been organized by the 1960s Old Boys Group of the College. The objectives of, the, of holding the program included completion of construction of 10 classrooms and sponsoring of the Lalit Atulat Mudali Memorial Scholarship Program. Unveiling of the new edition of the History of Royal College Journal, which traces back its history of the school to 1932, has also taken place. A copy of the book was presented to the Prime Minister. The principal and a large number of students were also present at the occasion.
from this came a large number <coughs> of leading royalists, including James Pearis, Ponnambalam Ramanathan, Ponnambalam Arunashalam, and of course, the person responsible for modernizing Sri Lanka, President Jayawadana. In different fields, in different areas, not only in politics, in law, in uh, sciences, in business, we have made our contribution and shaped the history of this country. So I think it gives me certainly great uh, pleasure to know that I was not merely an institution, but I am part of a history. Now the Colombo Municipal Council says that it will be able to completely clear piles of garbage in Colombo City by next Monday. Municipal Commissioner of the CMC Palitanana Akara says that more than 500 metric tons of refuse have already been disposed to the Aruakalu garbage yard. Transporting of garbage in Colombo to the Aruakalu sanitary garbage dump is taking place continuously. The Ministry of Megapolis and Western Development has altered dumping of garbage of Colombo to the Keravalapitiya refusal disposal site last Monday. Residents of Colombo were subjected to severe difficulty as a result of this decision. The appeals court has ordered the Vanatha Villua Pradesh Sabha yesterday to allow the CMC to dispose garbage to the Aruakalu garbage yard without any obstruction. The order is valid till the 28th of this month. Municipal Commissioner Nane Akara also said that a plan has been prepared to manage garbage disposal by January of next year. Uh, Municipal so the Commissioner the of the CMC, Palita Nane Akara, said that the program would cost nearly 150 million rupees a month. A tipper truck is able to carry about 10 metric tons of garbage. The government is able to bear a cost of 100,000 rupees for each truck. Rainy weather has caused obstruction to the program due to water mixing into the garbage. However, measures have been taken to transport all garbage to Arwakalu by day after tomorrow. He also expressed hope of being able to engage in successful garbage disposal programs without the support of outside institutions until de December this year. India says the large participation of Indian companies in recent exhibitions in Sri Lanka is a reflection of India's solidarity with Sri Lanka during difficult times. Minister of Plantation Industries Navin Disanayaka and Taranjit Singh Sendhu, High Commissioner of India, inaugurated the sixth edition of Complast, complete plastic exhibition yesterday at BMICH Colombo. The third edition of the International Rubber Expo and fourth edition of Comexpo, Complete Manufacturing Expo, were also inaugurated. participation of Indian companies here today reiterates the fact that India stands shoulder to shoulder with their brothers and sisters in Sri Lanka during these difficult times. Let us work together for a safer, better, richer tomorrow. We remain ready to walk with you at all times. India exports plastic raw materials as well as value-added plastic products to Sri Lanka worth more than $150 million. We also import plastic products from Sri Lanka. However, trade in plastics forms only a small part of our total bilateral trade. There is scope to do a lot more. While the usage and benefits of plastics are manifold, it also gets branded as a polluting material. Plastics needs to be collected, disposed or recycled as per lay down guidelines. The issue of plastic waste also needs to be suitably addressed. In fact, there is wide scope for industries based on recycling of plastic waste. This will ensure environmentally sustainable growth. 
Now in India, Buddhists in Ladakh has not only open-heartedly welcomed the central government's decision to declare Ladakh as a union territory, but also called massive celebrations in the city of Leh. Now meanwhile, the chief prelates of the Malvatu and Asgiri chapters said yesterday Sri Lanka was happy as a Buddhist country because of the Indian government's naming of Ladakh as a union territory, which has a 70% Buddhist population. Ladakh locals came in huge number to celebrate their freedom from Kashmir in their traditional attire. The national flag was designed all over on the ground owned by the Ladakh Buddhist Association. Folk dance, dance and different art mediums made the event memorable. Ladakh also thanked Prime Minister Narendra Modi for his move. Muslim community leader Dr. Abdul Qayyim, who took part in the celebrations, told India today, it has been a historic decision which was a decades old demand. Meanwhile, the Indian Assistant High Commissioner Virendra Singh met Mahanaik of the R. Malwatha chapter, Most Venerable Tibbatu Ave Sri Sumangalatera, and Mahanaik of the Askariya chapter, Most Venerable Varaka Goda Sri Nyana Ratanatera on Thursday. Uh, union territory in India, and uh, uh, this has been created after removing certain provisions which uh, stopped the aid from uh, central government that was being given to the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Those provisions have been removed. Uh, the state of Jammu and Kashmir was uh, made into uh, two union territories. Both of them were in fact very happy and uh, they said that um, it's indeed nice that uh, there is a union territory with the, with the Buddhist majority in India. They said that it was a purely internal affair of India and uh, they wished uh, all the very best to the new province and hoped uh, that uh, in future it will be uh, converted into a full-fledged state as well. Minister Sajid Premadasa says that a sustainable development program which creates social justice by eliminating social inequalities inherent in female-headed households in the north and east will be established. The minister made these remarks at the ceremony to declare open Tiruvarapuram reawakened villages in Tirumachi and Sentamil Gramam in Valikamam West in Jaffna. The villagers were the 244th and 45th model villagers constructed under the Samata 7 Yali Pibidena Uda Gambana program. 44 houses have been built in these villages at a cost of 41.6 million rupees. The Sentamil Gramam village was built under the Indian Housing Aid program. Many social welfare programs have also been implemented in parallel to this event. Now, the first Randoli Perahara of the Kandi Asala Festival has commenced parading the streets. Massive crowds of local and foreign tourists have flocked to watch the Perahara today as well. The maiden Randoli Perahara commenced at the auspicious time of 7.32 p.m. with majestic Tusker Vasana carrying the sacred casket, accompanied by other Tuskers, Miyanraja and Singharaja. The Randoli Perahara is scheduled to return to the Sri Dalanda Maligawa after travelling along the Dalanda Vidya, Dia Sinanaika Vidya, Deva Vidya, Colombo Street, Ia Sinanaika Street and Queen Street. A special security plan is in operation in connection with the Kandy Asala Festival. Now, Sri Lanka's tourism industry, badly hurt by the Easter Sunday bombings, is now showing signs of gradual recovery, industrial sources report. Arrivals are picking up during the Kandy Perahara season. The Asala Perahara in Kandy is a major tourist attraction in Sri Lanka. The event is famous as the most colorful and decorative cultural pageant in the island nation. Tourist arrivals from Europe and Asia Pacific, which together account for 90% of the total visitors to Sri Lanka, nearly halved in July from a year ago, according to the latest data from the country's Tourism Development Authority. However, Sri Lanka tourism showed signs of revival in July with an 83% increase in tourist arrivals from the previous month after plunging over 70% following the Easter Sunday bomb attacks. Europe became the largest source of tourist traffic to Sri Lanka with 50% of the total traffic received in July 2019.
Poland. We are from Poland, yes. Poland. One week ago we came to Colombo. Three weeks we spent here in Sri Lanka. The candy festival is the most famous uh, festival, so uh, we wanted to see it because I have read a lot about it. We feel here very safe and feel it is not a good idea to avoid such country like your country because the problem with the terrorism is everywhere. In Europe, the same. I think it is here is very safe and we feel very safe here and very happy and comfortable. We don't feel any danger here. Uh, tomorrow we, go, we are going to, to Dabula. Then to, to Polonaruba, yes, and Aranadhapura, and then to finally to the Trikomale. Yes. I happy. He's very happy to be here. It's a beautiful city. Uh, we arrived rest day and uh, we are waiting for the show for the Pereira. Yes, we visit uh, early in the morning. Very beautiful. Tomorrow we are going to Sigiria. From Tunisia. This is first time this summer in Sri Lanka. A wonderful Sri Lanka. Security is good. The temple, the interior of the temple is good. And people is good. People, people um, is good. Defense Secretary General Shante Kotegoda was engaged in an inspection tour at the Zion Church in Batiklo today. The church was heavily damaged in the Easter Sunday attack, terror attacks. Reconstruction of the church is taking place through the labor of the Sri Lanka army. The Defense Secretary has expressed optimism over the speedy completion of repairs. Army Commander Lieutenant General Mahesh Senanayaka also took part in the tour. Now, Philippine security forces have said today that operations in search of two Sri Lankan terrorists continue. The Philippine security divisions have received reports regarding the two terrorist suspects engaging in the training of bombers for an attack in Luzon in the Philippines. The Philippine security sources have also found that the two Sri Lankan terror suspects were both Philippine and Sri Lankan passport holders. In their passports, their names were stated as Mark Kevin Samhun and Victoria Sofia Domingo. It has also been revealed that the mother of one of the suspects is a Filipino national. According to the Philippine security sources, both of them were possessed with the knowledge of suicide attacks. It has also been found out that they were connected to the National Tauhid Jamaat organization, which conducted the Easter Sunday attacks in Sri Lanka and also to the SKFI extremist group of the Philippines. The Filipino reports also point out that the SKFL extremists are also partners of the IS terrorist organization. We take a look at a few more local news items in brief. A special course on infantry has commenced at the Madurai Training School today with the participation of 16 officers and 341 soldiers. Chief invitee for the occasion was Group Commander of the Army Training School, Brigadier N.A.P. Newnheller. Offering of bee honey to the sacred Sri Dalada Maligava by the indigenous community took place this morning. It is an ancient tradition to make this offering prior to the commencement of the Randoli Perahara. Leader of the indigenous community, Uruvarige Vanilato, Diavadanilame Nilangadala, and a group participated at this occasion. Second Peli Perahara of the historic Devinuvara Sri Vishnu Devalaya paraded the streets for the 762nd occasion yesterday. The Perahara was enriched by with the dancing displays of upcountry, low country and Sabargamo traditions. Final Randori Maha Perahara will be paraded on the 14th. The thick layer of oil spread in the coastal areas from Panadura to Kaladura South has been cleared. The operation has been carried out jointly by the Navy Marine Protection Authority and the Department of Coast Conservation. Reason for the formation of oil layer has not yet been determined. However, the Department of the Coast Conservation informs the general public not to touch the seawater as it is poisonous. Now on to more local stories. Police Media Spokesman Superintendent of Police, Juan Gunasekara, says an investigation has commenced over the death of a suspect in police custody who was arrested in Matakulia. He made these remarks at a media briefing at the police headquarters today. 
Police media spokesman S.P. Ruan Gunasekara said that the Mata Kulia police station was reported to have received a telephone call via 119 about the arrest of a suspect by residents in Kadirana Vatta in the Mata Kulia police division at dawn today. Thereafter, the suspect was taken over by the officials of the Mata Kulia police station. He was identified as 26 year old Janaka Gomez, a resident of Kadirana Road, Mata Kulia. According to the report, the suspect entered a three story residence and a woman on on the third floor who witnessed this was reported to have screamed her shouting however prompted the suspect to jump back onto the ground it has also been reported that he was later kept under police detention and died around eight and nine o'clock this morning an investigation in this connection is also being conducted by the police superintendent colombo north Petafestra 2019 program organized by the Ministry of Industries and Commerce has commenced today. It is being conducted today and tomorrow, centering on Main Street Peta. Minister Rishad Badiuddin and State Minister Buddhika Patirana has presided over the inauguration today. The program is being conducted with the objective of restoring the commercial economy affected by the Easter Sunday terror attacks. That's all the news we have for you tonight. The National News Broadcast will return tomorrow. And until then, a very good night to you all. Good night.